Shri Advaita Gadata Shri Vasadi Kaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare yeah, Hare Krishna, we are continuing to read from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 15. Does anyone remember what we read yesterday? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, we read that the spiritual master should be respected as God, but it does not mean that he is God, but he is bringing us close to God and he is a representative of Krishna. And to please spiritual master, just help us to spread Krishna and to help him to spread Krishna consciousness, we can attract the mercy of Lord Krishna. And there was this very important that we need to have equal faith on Krishna and Guru. And then only the knowledge is revealed to us. Yeah. And a pure devotee always wants to serve the pad pad kamala anudas anudas like a devotee of a krishna is devotee 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 in the seven gopi bharatur pad kamala das das anudas yeah servant of the servant of the maintainer of the gopis yes servant of the servant of the maintainer of the gopis okay yes oh. And we can serve spiritual master if you want to go back to Godhead, then by Bapu and Vani. Hmm. Bapu is the by the physical service, and Vani is by following his instructions. Yeah. And Bapu is serving him physically. Hmm. But it is not possible sometimes. So you mentioned that we can serve him by Vani. By following yeah. his instructions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Also, like uh, you had told us, that the purpose of life is to become spiritually rich. But men are now engaged in trying to become materially rich. In Kalyu, people have become material conscious and not... Krishna consciousness. Vedic rituals will not be helpful for spiritual advancement. Yeah. 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 Vedic rituals don't help. One needs to become a devotee of Krishna. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. So we are going to continue with today's 3233. Pra Pranapano Sani. Rundiyat. Pura Swana Sagra Nirikshana Yato Yato Nisarati Yato Yato Nisarati Mana Kama Hatam Brahmat Mana Kama Hatam Brahmat Tatas Tat Oparitya Tatas Tat Oparitya Ridi Runda Yachaner Buddha Ridi Yachaner Buddha Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swamishla Prabhupada. While continuously staring at the tip of the nose, a learned yogi practices the breathing exercises through the technical means known as Puraka, Kumbhaka, and Rechaka controlling inhalation and exhalation, and then stopping them both. In this way, the yogi restricts his mind from material attachment and gives up all mental desires. As soon as the mind, being defeated by lusty desires, drifts toward feelings, <clears throat> sorry, feelings of sense gratification, 
the yogi should immediately bring it back and arrest it within the core of his heart. The practice of yoga is concisely explained herein. When this practice of yoga is perfect, one sees the super soul, the Paramatma feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead within the core of one's heart. So meditation is not done on any thing void or any imaginary object. Meditation is always done on the form of the Paramatma in the heart, the Vishnu form. Lord Kapila Dev describes this in quite detail in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam when he's giving instructions to his mother Devahuti. That section is called Kapila Shiksha, that how meditation is actually done on Paramatma. Because sometimes it's a fashion that, okay, you can, you know, meditate on anything you want, but that's all speculation. And the real way is, I have to meditate on the super soul in the heart, the Paramatma in the heart. Okay, however, in Bhagavad Gita 647, the Supreme Lord says, Yogina Bapi Sarvesha, Madgate Nantar Atmana, Shadavan Bajate Yomamsa Me Yukta Tamo Mataha. Of all yogis, he who always abides in me with great faith, worshipping me in transcendental loving service, is most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. So we have to understand that which kind of yoga we have to do in this age of Kali because it's not practical for us to go to the forest. Even Narad Muni was saying, same what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, you have to go alone to the forest, search a seat, now you have to control your breathing. So it's not practical for us. So we are doing Sankirtan Yagya. Uh, we are hearing and chanting the names of the Lord. Krishna is saying that the devotee is the highest yogi. A devotee can immediately become a perfect yogi because he practices keeping Krishna constantly within the core of his heart. Because all the rules and regulations are always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. There are so many rules, regulations. All of them are to support this. Always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. And the devotee never forgets Krishna. He keeps Krishna in the center of all his activities. And then he does his whatever he needs to do throughout his day, keeping Krishna in the center. This is another way to practice yoga easily. The Lord says, Manmanabhava Madbhakto, Madhyaji Maam Namaskuru. Always think of me and become my devotee. Worship me and offer your homage unto me. Bhagavad Gita 1865, Krishna repeats this, you know. He says it in the ninth chapter, 934. And again, he's repeating it in 965. Krishna is not like us that he forgets. You know, we may repeat ourselves. We forget what we say. We may repeat. You know, like Karishma will say, Hey, mom, you already told me that. I'm like, oh, really? I told you. I forgot. But Krishna is not saying because he's forgotten something. He's saying for us to remember, to, to give us the importance <clears throat> it's important for us. That's why Krishna is repeating it. Always think of me, he's saying. Worship me. Offer homage unto me, Krishna says. If one practices devotional service by always keeping Krishna within the core of his heart, manmana, he immediately becomes a first-class yogi. Furthermore, keeping Krishna within the mind is not a difficult task for the devotee. For an ordinary man, in the bodily concept of life, the practice of yoga may be helpful, but one who immediately takes to devotional service can immediately become a perfect yogi without difficulty. So actually this is the process that's given to us in this age of Kali, Sankirtan Yagya. It's not practical for us to, to do meditation for thousands of years. We don't have that kind of life. So devotional service, bhakti yoga is recommended. Any comments? So, let me see. Okay, this is how also 
Deepika is writing, this is Hare Krishna, this is how also some devotees may feel at the time of their passing from this world. We sometimes see some are silent and smiling, as if now, they're, now they only see Krishna. Yeah, yeah, it's true, some devotees. Uh, yeah. Okay. Evam abhya abhyasyata chittam. Evam abhyasyatam chittam. Vyakta. Kale nal piyasayate hai. Kale nal piyasayate hai. Anisham tasya nirvanam. Anisham tasya nirvanam. Yati anindana vahin vahatnivar. Yati anindana vahivat. When the yogi regularly practice in this way, in a short time, his heart becomes fixed and free from disturbance, like a fire without flames or smoke. Nirvana means the cessation of all material desires. Sometimes desirelessness is understood to imply an end to the workings of the mind, but this is not possible. The living entity has senses, and if the senses stopped working, the living entity would no longer be a living entity. He would be exactly like a stone or wood. This is not possible because he's living, he's nitya and chetana, eternally sentient. So someone may say, okay, I want to give up all desires. I'm going to become desireless. Is it actually possible for us to become desireless? No. No, why? Because the soul, because from the last birth, and I think we are having desires. So it is yeah. not possible for us to become desireless. Yeah, because the soul, because even the desire to become desireless is a desire, yeah. mm -hmm. right? You know, that's yeah. also a desire. Yes. So it's actually not possible for us to be desireless. We just have to choose what to desire. We have to understand mm -hmm. what is the correct type of desire. So by hearing Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, we are understanding, oh, how should we actually desire? We should desire for pure devotional service. That's what we are understanding. So, so we soul, can see that the soul always desires something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because we are conscious. Prabhupada is saying we are not like stone or wood. You know. We are eternally conscious. Nitya and Chetana, eternally sentient. For those who are not very advanced, the practice of yoga is recommended in order to stop the mind from being agitated by material desires. But if one fixes his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna, his mind naturally becomes peaceful very soon. So when we see the hierarchy, right? The hierarchy is... There is the senses, above the senses is the mind, above the mind is the intelligence, above the intelligence is the soul. So, if we can take directions, if the intelligence takes directions from the soul, controls the mind, fixes on the lotus feet of Krishna, then that is the correct way. What we do is we let our senses roam anywhere, everywhere and the mind takes control, then we, the mind tells us, ah, eat this, you will be so happy. Go there, you will enjoy. Watch this, it's going to be so exciting. And that's what we do. But actually what we need to do is the intelligence needs to take direction from the soul uh, and fix the mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. So th th then the mind naturally becomes peaceful, actually because the mind is like a monkey. It's going from one place to another, jumping, jumping, jumping. And the mind can only find its rest at the lotus feet of Krishna. Lord Kapiladev 
also in in the third canto we hear that and Prabhupada mentions in the purport also that the mind can be peaceful only when it is fixed at the lotus feet of Krishna. You know, we try so many different things that, oh, I want peace of mind. We may have heard our own self say that many times. Or we feel ourselves, or we feel, we hear other people say that, I want peace of mind, so I'm going to go away. But even if we go away, the mind goes with us. Wherever we go, the mind is going with us. So the real way the mind can be peaceful is if we can hear and chant more, more and more. Remember Krishna more. Fix our mind on Krishna. Keep Krishna in the center of our life. You know, like how the mother, mother keeps the newborn baby center of her life. Her whole life revolves around that. Baby is sleeping, let me do this. Now, before baby wakes up, let me do this. Okay, now it's time for the baby to eat food or shower. Like her whole being is centered around the baby. So the pure devotee, his center is Krishna. His whole being is centered around Krishna. How can I please Krishna? And in that way, he's naturally peaceful. This piece is described in Bhagavad Gita 5.29. Bhuktaram yagyata pasam sarva loka maheshwaram. Suridam sarva bhutanam gyatva mam shantim ritchati. If one can understand Krishna as the supreme enjoyer, the supreme proprietor of everything, and the supreme friend of everyone, one is established in peace and is free from material agitation. However, for one who cannot understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the practice of yoga is recommended. So, of course, bhakti yoga is recommended. But if one is not able to do bhakti yoga, then one is recommended, okay, do hatha yoga or ashtanga yoga. Like that, do ashtanga yoga. But Krishna is actually saying, understand that he is the Supreme Enjoyer, he is the supreme proprietor and he is the supreme friend. If we can understand these three things, then we can be peaceful. We are thinking I am the best friend of everyone. But we can be friends for how many people, you know? How many living entities? There are numberless living entities all over the universe. Krishna is the supreme friend. If we can understand that, we can start to begin become peaceful. The Krishna is the proprietor. Because he's the proprietor, he's the supreme enjoyer. You know, we 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 own whatever is there in our house. So then we can enjoy it, what however we like. A neighbor cannot say, Oh, why you're sitting like this in your sofa? Or why you're keeping sofa here, you must keep it there. No, you'll say, I wanna do whatever I want to do. I'm enjoying it myself in my house. So Krishna is a supreme enjoyer because he's the supreme proprietor. Everything belongs to him. And if we can understand that, then we can be peaceful. So there are so many different workshops on how to control the mind, how to control the mind. So they, may, they, they will give some temporary relief. They will help. But the real relief the mind will get Really, it will be peaceful only when we can surrender to Krishna. Yeah. We may try with some mental exercises, control the mind. Yeah, sure, of course, it helps. It helps. But the complete relax, the complete peace of the mind can come only when we surrender to Krishna. Any comments, questions? Okay, going forward then. Kama dibir anavidham. Kama dibir anavidham. Prashanta kilavriti yat. Prashanta kilavriti yat. Chittam brahma sukhas prashtam. Chittam brahma sukhas prashtam. Naivotishtheta karhichet. 
When one's consciousness is con uncontaminated by material lusty desires, it becomes calm and peaceful in all activities. For one is situated in eternal blissful life. Once situated on that platform, one does not return to materialistic activities. So why do we have these material desires? We are the pure soul. Because we are contaminated. Because we are thinking we are the body. What is the contamination? We are thinking we are the body. So in that relation, then we are thinking, okay, I want to enjoy the material world. So Brahma Sukhas Prashtam is also described in Bhagavad Gita 1854. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Na Sochati Na Kangshati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhaktim Labhate Param One who is transcendently situated at once realizes the Supreme Brahman and becomes fully joyful. He never laments or desires to have anything. He is equally disposed toward every living entity. In this situation, he begins transcendental activities or devotional service to the Lord. So this is the beginning of real life. The Brahman platform. It's already liberated. This is the beginning of pure devotional service. When one can understand I'm not the body, I'm a spirit soul, part and parcel of Krishna. I'm eternal servant of Krishna. And one really understands that. Then one engages in pure devotional service without any material desires, without any touch of uh, gyan or so no, no mental speculation or no desire for any mystic perfection. So liberation is not the end, it's the beginning of real life. And then uh, because he's understood, he's Brahman, he's happy, fully joyful. He's, he's not lamenting. He has no material desires. He's understood his constitutional position. Generally, once elevated to the transcendental platform of Brahma Sukha, transcendental bliss, one never comes down. But if one does not engage in devotional service, there is a chance of his returning to the material platform. So one may be liberated, but if he doesn't engage in devotional service, one may understand I'm not the body, I'm the soul. But And if he does not engage in devotional service, then for the want of activity, because soul is always active and he has no knowledge of spiritual activity, he will again come to the material platform and engage in material activity. Aruya Krishrena Parampadam Tata Patantiyado Anadrisht, anadrita yusmat angraya. One may rise to the platform of Brahma Sukha, transcendental bliss. But even from that platform, one may fall down to the material platform if he does not engage himself in devotional service. So, devotional service, one may think that, oh, I have to engage in devotional service only till the time in the, I'm in the material world. Then when I get liberated, no need to do anything. You know, I'm just going to, then I'm going to become God. Or I don't need to do anything. No. Devotional service is the process and the goal. It's the beginning of a real life, of a reality. Devotional service. Pure devotional service. Any comments? Questions? So going on. Ya Prabhrajya Grahat Purvam. Ya Prabhrajya Grahat Purvam. Tri Vargava Panat Punaha. Tri Vargava Panat Punaha. Yadi Seveta Tan Vikshu. Yadi Seveta Tan Vikshu. Savevan Tashi Apatrapa. Sarve vanta shi shi pat 
Trapah. One who accepts the sannyas order gives up the three principles of materialistic activities in which one indulges in the field of household life, namely religion, economic development, and sense gratification. One who first accepts sannyas but then returns to such materialistic activities is to be called a vantashi or one who eats his own vomit. He is indeed a shameless person. Materialistic activities are regulated by the instit institution of Varna Sharma Dharma. Without Varna Sharma Dharma, materialistic activities constitute animal life. Yet, even in human life, while observing the principles of Varna and Ashram, what are the Varnas? The four Varnas? Oh. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. Yeah, and the ashrams? Grasta, Vanaprastha, and... Uh, sorry, Brahmacharya, Grasta, Vanaprastha, and Sanyas. Yeah, that's right. These are the four Varnas for ashrams. Okay, one must ultimately accept Sanyas, the renounced order. For only by the renounced order can one be situated in Brahma Sukha or transcendental bliss. In Brahma Sukha, one is no longer attracted by lusty desires. So the the point, the idea why the ashrams were there, so that one can live peacefully in this world, you know, fulfill whatever material desires are there, at the same time cultivate spiritual knowledge, you know, then give up those desires towards the end of life. Because if still we have those material desires, to enjoy this material world, then we are going to come back to the material world because the desire is there still to enjoy the material world. So the society was so designed that one comes to one oppressed to get detached from all the household affairs, take up spiritual life more seriously, and then eventually take up sannyas that fully focus now in spiritual life. So, indeed, when one is no longer disturbed, especially by lusty desires for sexual indulgence, he is fit to become a sannyasi. Otherwise, one should not accept the sannyas order. If one accepts sannyas at an immature stage, there is every possibility of his being attracted by women and lusty desires and thus again becoming a so-called grihast or a victim of women. Because sex desires is so strong, right? We have been hearing all along in Bhagavatam that that is what keeps us here in the material world. So in order to actually become a sannyasi, one needs sufficient training. Training has to be given that one can actually take up the sannyas order and then no more connection with women. So then what is said that if one, one takes up sannyas, then again he gets involved with a woman, such a person is most shameless and he's called Vantashi, or one who eats that which he has already vomited. He certainly leads a condemned life because he had already given up. He, you know, he had given up family life. He's taken up pure life. Then again now he's going back to family life. So means kind what Narad Muni is saying, he's like degrading himself then again. So, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, like uh, immature stage, it means it's not related with age, right? Yeah, not not related to age. No. Yeah, it's it with qualification, right? That, right. That's right. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In our Krishna consciousness movement, it is advised, therefore, that the sannyasis and brahmacharis keep strictly aloof from the association of women so that there will be no chance of their fall falling down again as victims of lusty desires. Okay. Yes, Vadeha Smito Natma. Ye swati as Smrato Ma Martyo Vidkrimi Bas Mavat 
મત્યો વિતકિર્મી બસ સન્યાસીસ but who again give importance to the body and glorify it as the self are to be considered the greatest rascals because he had he had evolved in his consciousness he had progressed in his consciousness he understood i'm not the body i'm the soul body is going to die but again coming back to the body consciousness a sanyasi is one who has clearly understood through advancement in knowledge that brahman he the person himself is the soul not the body one who has this understanding may take sanyas for he is situated in the aham brahmasmi position aham brahmasmi i am brahman means i am the soul doesn't mean i am the para brahman krishna is the para brahman so if one has understood this then one is recommended that they can take sanyas બ્રહ્મભૂત પ્રસન્નાત્મા શોચતી ન કાંક્ષતી સચ અ પર્સન હુ નો લોંગ લમેન્સ ઓ હેન્કર્સ ટુ મેન્ટેન હિસ બોડી એન્ડ હુ કેન એક્સેપ્ટ ઓલ લિવિંગ એન્ટિટીઝ એઝ સ્પિરિટ સોલ્સ કેન દેન એન્ટર ધ ડિવોશનલ સર્વિસ ઓફ ધ લોર્ડ ઇફ વન ડઝ નોટ એન્ટર ધ ડિવોશનલ સર્વિસ ઓફ ધ લોર્ડ બટ આર્ટિફિશલી કન્સિડર્સ હિમસેલ્ફ બ્રહ્મન ઓ નારાયણ નોટ પરફેક્ટલી અન્ડરસ્ટેન્ડિંગ દેટ ધ સોલ એન્ડ બોડી આર ડિફરન્ટ one certainly falls down patanti adaha so pure devotional service means he's completely understood i'm not the body i'm the soul and that's why he has no material desire and he has no material lamentation also and he sees as he is understood himself as the soul he understands all living entities as also spirit souls and in that consciousness one can engage in pure devotional service artificially thinking i am not artificially thinking that i am god that does not help you know it does not help at all or artificially thinking that i am the soul we may think i am the soul but then how we are acting you know if we are acting like the body we will get reactions karma so such a person again gives importance to the body there are many sanyasis in india who stress the importance of the body some of them give special importance to the body of the poor man accepting him as daridra narayan as if narayan had a material body so we spoke about this a few days ago it's not that the poor man has become narayan no narayan parmatma is in the heart of the poor man also in the heart of the rich man in everyone's heart and narayan never takes a material body so many other sanyasis stress the importance of the social position of the body as a brahman kshatriya vaishya or shudra such sanyasis are considered the greatest rascals asatama they are shameless because they have not yet understood the difference between the body and the soul and instead have accepted the body of a brahmana to be a brahmana so narad muni is saying that one can one should not artificially try to uh raise to that platform but actually understand that i'm spirit soul by by doing artificial and still giving importance to the body then one is being duplicitous brahmanism brahmanya consists of the knowledge of brahman but actually the body of a brahmana is not brahman similarly the body is neither rich nor poor if the body of a poor man were daridra narayan this would mean that the body of a rich man on the contrary must be dhani narayan therefore sanyasis who do not know the meaning of narayan those who regard the body as brahman or as narayan are described here as asatama the most abominable rascals 
Because the body is not rich nor poor. The body is material. The body is not Narayan. The body is not spiritual. The body is material. Prabhupada is saying if somebody says the poor man is the Ridra Narayan, then rich man's body should be Dhani Narayan. Because he's rich Narayan then. But that's not the point. The body is material body. Narayan is the Supreme Lord. And the soul is completely different than the body. So following the bodily concept of life, such sannyasis make various programs to serve the body. They conduct farcical missions consisting of so-called religious activities meant to mislead all of human society. These sannyasis have been described herein as apatrapaha and asatama, shameless and fallen from spiritual life. So Narad Muni is strictly condemning some, somebody who is a sannyasi and yet he is giving importance to the body. And um, yeah, so he's and, and misleading others. Misleading others. So in the name of religion. So Narad Muni is, is strictly condemning such, such behavior. Is that okay? So like what it's trying to say, like, yeah, you cannot just say that is the Narayan and Narayan is in the, in the poor and the rich or any yeah. all living entities, right? Yeah, that's right. So we should not say that is the Narayan. Yeah. Narayan is only in the poor. Yeah. Right? Narayan is in the heart of the rich and poor. And does it mean okay. that the poor man has become Narayan? No. No, that's why. Exactly. It's just mm. that Narayan is there in the heart of the poor man and also in the heart of the rich man. Yeah. As the super soul. So otherwise they're giving uh importance to the body whereas body is material the supreme lord is the supreme lord the soul is the soul so Narad Muni is saying that one should not do such things and then in the name of religion or in the name of uh, doing such welfare activities one may mislead others so Narad Muni is condemning such persons and such activities. Okay. So we'll stop here for today. Srimad Bhagavatam yes. ki che, Shla Prabhupada ki che, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki che. Thank you so much for listening and enjoying.